Okay, we are going to plot some complex numbers in this example, and we are going to look at transformations of those complex numbers. So first of all, let's plot Z1, which is 2 plus 3i. Okay, so the real part is 2, the imaginary part is 3. So here is the complex number 2 plus 3i. Next, we want Z2, which is 5 plus 1i. So the real part is 5, the imaginary part is 1. So here is Z2. Now let's look at twice Z1. So we want to multiply 2 plus 3i by 2. So I've written that over here. So we multiply the real part by 2, and we multiply the imaginary part by 2. Now that has the effect of scaling the complex number. So if we imagine drawing a line from the origin to the complex number Z1 and double the length of this line. So we'll end up up here. So we double the distance from here to here. We double this distance and uh, we get a point up here. So this point represents the complex number 4 plus 6i. It is 2 times Z1. Now what about a half Z1? Again, we could get that by considering the geometry. We draw a line from 0 to Z1, and we imagine getting half of this line. We will get this number here. So this number is a half Z1. Okay, if we work this out, half of 2 is 1, half of 3 is 1.5, or just 3 over 2. I'll write it as 1.5. Okay, so the real part of a half Z1 is 1, as you can see here. The imaginary part is 1.5. Now, what about minus Z1? So let's just write that down. We want to minus 2 plus 3i. It's the same as multiplying the complex number 2 plus 3i by minus 1. That's going to give us minus 2 minus 3i. So it's the same as reflecting the complex number Z1 in the origin. So if we want to do this geometrically, we could draw a line from Z1 through the origin and out the other side, get the distance of Z1 to the origin and mark off that same distance on the other side and we end up at this point. So the real part is minus 2, the imaginary part is minus 3. Now, in part 6 we want minus a half z1. So I've written minus a half z1 over here. So we've minus a half by 2 gives us minus 1. Minus a half by 3 gives us minus 1.5. Um, so that's that point, this point here. The real part is minus 1. The imaginary part is minus 1.5. So here we have minus a half z1. So if we multiply a complex number by a negative scalar, we get the image we, we map that point to the origin. Okay, if we multiply Z1 by minus 1, we get the image of Z1 under central symmetry in the origin. If we multiply by minus a half Z1, well, that's the same as multiplying by plus a half Z1 to get this point, and then we reflect plus a half Z1 through the origin to get our answer. Now, what about Z1 bar? Well, that's the conjugate of Z1. So Z1 is 2 plus 3i, which means that Z1 bar is got by changing the sign of the imaginary part. So the plus 3i becomes minus 3i. So the real part of Z1 bar is plus 2. The imaginary part is minus 3. So here we have the conjugate of Z1. Or sorry, um, yeah, the conjugate of Z1 is Z1 bar. Okay, notice that that's the image of the point Z1 under axial symmetry in the real axis. We can imagine folding the complex plane over the real axis, and Z1 will map onto Z1 bar. Okay, so this distance is the same as distance, so we get axial symmetry of Z1. We map it through the real axis. Next, we look at I times Z1. So let's write that down over here. So we want to multiply I by 2 plus 3i. So i times 2 is 2i. 
i times 3i is 3i squared. But of course, i squared is minus 1. So we have plus 3 times minus 1. That gives us minus 3. Now the convention that we normally use is to write the real part first and the imaginary part second. So we write minus 3 first. The imaginary part was plus 2i. Okay, so the real part is minus 3, the imaginary part is plus 2. So here we have iz1. Now, a very important point to realize is that if we multiply a complex number by i, we rotate that complex number anti-clockwise about the origin. Okay, so if we imagine a line from the complex number to the origin, so I'll just roughly draw this in. And we rotate this line anti-clockwise through an angle of 90 degrees about the origin. This point will end up over here. So I'll just show this line. So I've rotated through an angle of 90 degrees. Um, so this ties in with the slopes of perpendicular lines that we saw in coordinate geometry. Let's take uh, the vertical distance of this point to the real axis. Okay, we know that the imaginary part is 3, so this vertical distance is 3. If we rotate this triangle through an angle of 90 degrees, the vertical line becomes horizontal. Okay, if we rotate a vertical line through an angle of 90 degrees, it becomes a horizontal line. It becomes this line here. So this distance of 3 appears over here. And if we look at this horizontal distance here, okay, that corresponds to the real part of this number. This uh, distance is 2. So this horizontal line becomes vertical when we rotate this triangle through 90 degrees. So this distance is 2. So you can see that we have um, interchanged the coordinates of the point to get our new point. Okay, if we write this point in terms of coordinates, the x value is 2, y value is 3. Okay, these get interchanged. The x value is 3. Well, actually, there's going to be a minus sign in front of that. And the y value is 2. Now, so we can compare everything to coordinate geometry. We can compare this action of multiplying a complex number by i to the slopes of perpendicular lines. The slope of this line is rise over run, which is 3 over 2, and it's positive for lines sloping in this direction. Um, so when we multiply the complex number z by i, we get this new complex number. Um, when we join it to the origin, we get a line with a slope of minus 2 thirds. So we just invert 3 over 2 to get uh, 2 over 3, and we change the sign from plus to minus. Anyway, the key thing to remember is this. When we multiply a complex number by i, like we did here, we multiply the complex number z1 by i, we rotate that complex number anti-clockwise about the origin. Next we look at minus i times z1. So let's write that down here. Minus i times z1. So that's minus i times 2 plus 3i. Well, we've already seen i times 2 plus 3i. We've seen that that's rotated z1 to this position here, anti 90 degrees anti-clockwise about the origin. If we multiply by minus i, it's like multiplying this number by minus i. So that's going to have the effect of um, trans um, getting the image of it under central symmetry in the origin. So minus 3 becomes plus 3 plus 2 becomes minus 2, so we get this point here. So this is minus i z1. Okay, so it's just got by minusing this thing here, and we know how to do that from before. Uh, so l let's just uh, work it out from this now as well. If we multiply minus i by 2, we get minus 2i. Minus i by 3i is minus 3i squared. i squared is minus 1, so that's minus 1 by minus 3, which is plus 3. 
So I'll write the real part first. So we get plus 3 minus 2i. It's exactly what we have here. And that is the same as rotating the complex number Z1 90 degrees clockwise about the origin this time. Not anti-clockwise, but clockwise. Okay, so if we draw a line from Z1 to the origin and rotate this line 90 degrees clockwise about the origin, Z1 ends up here. Of course, the length of this line hasn't changed because we're just doing a rotation. So multiplying by minus i rotates a number clockwise through an angle of 90 degrees about the origin, whereas multiplying by plus i rotates a complex number anti-clockwise through 90 degrees about the origin. Finally, let's consider the complex number z2 minus a half z1. Um, I'll work that out over here. z2 was 5 plus i. Now, minus a half z1 is over here. We worked it out earlier. It's minus 1, minus 1.5 i. The imaginary part is minus 1.5. Okay, so we add real parts. 5 minus 1 is 4. We gather up the imaginary parts. We have plus 1, minus 1.5. That's minus 0 0.5 i. So this new number has real part 4 and imaginary part minus 0.5, so here it is. Now, let's um, see what's going on geometrically here. Basically what we are doing is adding these two complex numbers together. Okay, I could put a uh, plus sign in here to indicate that we're doing that. Just move this over here. So we're taking z2 and we're adding onto it this complex number minus a half z1. Now we can do that by constructing a parallelogram. So we draw a line from the origin to each of the complex numbers that we are adding together. Next we complete a parallelogram. So I draw a line that's parallel to this line here and then I draw in the other side of the parallelogram. So I draw a line that's parallel to this line here. So here we have a pair of parallel lines, and here's another pair. Okay, and, we're, and this corner of the parallelogram is the sum of the two complex numbers. Now, if you know anything about vectors, we could think of this as summing this vector and this vector here. The sum of two vectors is got by drawing in the diagonal of this parallelogram. So this vector here would be the resultant or the sum of these two vectors and the head of the vector is the sum of the two complex numbers. It's 4 minus 0 0.5i.